So recently I've been trying to rebuild Newcrest, the empty neighborhood in The Sims 4. When you're playing The Sims 4 base game, you get three neighborhoods, Willow Creek, Oasis Springs, and Newcrest. And Newcrest comes completely empty, which honestly, as a person who builds a lot in this game, I really like, but maybe as a player is a little bit annoying. And so I've been kind of working on building new lots with just the base game to fill up this whole area. I'm picturing some residential lots, a pool, I want to have a museum and a library, a bunch of houses, all new townies. And today I want to show you the first house that I built for this neighborhood. But first, a word from our sponsor. Now I know a lot of you probably already know about a game called Word Farm Adventure because I did a video for them like a month ago and they have very kindly sponsored this video as well. It's a free puzzle game available on iOS and Android so I'll have the link to download down below. It's a word game, you basically solve crossword puzzles and complete word scrabble missions and as you play through levels you slowly rebuild areas of the game. So for example you start rebuilding this farmhouse and you slowly choose like the colors of the towels in the bathroom and start to update everything inside. This combines like two of my favorite favorite things, the word games and the like house decorating. You could not get a more perfect game. And I'm dead serious. I've been playing this game a lot recently. I just flew like eight hours to help Dan move to the US. And I kid you not, I played this game like the entire time on the flight. I was sitting there doing my little scrabbles. It's really, really fun. It's actually the first game ever to cross over word puzzle games with escape adventures. And I'm not kidding. I love this game. So here's what I've been playing through and how my house looks right now. But there's a bunch of levels to choose from and a bunch more coming soon. I play a lot of games like this. I'm just a big fan of like word games in general, but this one is so cute and it's just rewarding to like work through puzzles and level up slowly and then also watch your farm improve. So thanks again to Word Farm Adventure for sponsoring this video and, and like I said, it's available now on iOS and Android and I'll have the link to download it for free in the description of this video. And with that being said, let's go ahead and jump right into the speed build. So in this house, I was kind of trying to juggle making a nice pretty house, but also make it base game only and also make it affordable because a lot of times when I build houses in The Sims, like fancier houses in The Sims, if I'm not trying to use a budget and I don't like limit myself at all, I'll build a house that costs like 150,000 simoleons and that's just not attainable. Like you cannot use that house without cheats and I don't want that to be the case because it's not fun to have to cheat for money always in The Sims. I'm very much the kind of person when I'm actually playing to want to like play rags to riches challenges and start out with zero simoleons and work my way up because I find The Sims is kind of boring when you're too rich, which I know sounds weird because in real life money makes everything easier, but in The Sims I feel like I'd rather have my Sims struggle. It's just more fun that way. So a lot of times I build houses that are more appropriate for that. So this house in general is a pretty useful one for probably most of you. Base game costs like 50,000 simoleons, which is still a lot of money, but you can actually earn that much money in The Sims. Like it's not impossible for your Sims to have that much, so it feels appropriate. <laughs> But it's this like craftsman style and I know I build a lot of houses that are this style, but look I'm just I'm projecting my dreams out into the world by building them in The Sims because this kind of house I think is like my favorite style of house ever in real life I love how these look and they just don't exist where I live nothing like this exists in Florida Nowhere is it possible to achieve this look <laughs> Especially not in central Florida and I wish it was because I think it's so pretty but this kind of thing just is not around where I am and so I um, I live out my dreams in The Sims 4 instead so <laughs> I'm just projecting, okay? Now I've actually built like four of the houses that are all in a row in this neighborhood on stream already. I've only posted this build on YouTube, but I have built a few more of the houses that are gonna be in Newcrest in this area. And I'm kind of trying to go for similar styles with all of them. They're not all like a craftsman house, but they all are very much like a Simsy Suburban type of house. <laughs> like they're somewhat realistic, not super fancy, affordable looking homes kind of like this one, and they're all made with the same materials. Like I wanted to use the same brick foundation and the same front pathway, but like different colors on all the walls. So the houses look like they belong in the same area, but they're not all identical is kind of what I was going for. Speaking of identical, um, where I live, <laughs> I think a lot of you probably have this kind of thing too. Like all the neighborhoods are the same, you know, like the neighborhood might have like two different houses and they're just like repeated next to each other. That's not what I'm going for with my new crest. <laughs> I want my new crest to look different than that. But I think a lot of us probably live in houses like that, right? Where like the house is just the same as the one next to it, just back and forth. My grandma's old house, their next door neighbor was the same house, but like rotated. So like the side of the house that was my grandma's house was their front. I think this has been happening for a long time. And their house was built in like 1920 or something, and they even did it then. So 
<laughs> we're all, we're used to it. But luckily in The Sims, we don't need to do that. Okay, you may have also noticed that I really struggled with the floor plan on this one, so my apologies for that. <laughs> I wasn't trying to, but I was really struggling and going back and forth with how I wanted it to look, because I was wanting an open floor plan, but I wanted a big dining room, and it was a big rectangle, so I didn't know where to put anything, and I just, it was... It's tough. I find that floor plans are usually kind of pretty easy for me, like I usually can do it somewhat naturally, but whenever I have a house like this, like a very symmetrical looking home, the floor plan is a lot harder. Because I say this all the time, but the floor plan kind of creates itself when you've got like bump outs, like that one on the side is obviously the bedroom, you know, it's the perfect spot for it, it's the right size, put the bed and the parents room in there and that's, that's set. But when you have just a big box, how do you split that up? <laughs> like, how do you logically do that? Especially when it's so symmetrical because then you've got like giant windows in the bathroom and where do you put anything? And it just, it it's a lot more difficult to do. So if you ever struggle with floor plans, don't worry, we all do. <laughs> Some houses are definitely easier than others to do floor plans on, that's for sure. And this house was a, was a tough one for me. And I will admit, um, this is a blue suburban house. I know that I can't build things that aren't this, but look, I have not built many a blue suburban in years, okay? When I was in high school, admittedly, I did used to build houses that were blue and looked like this pretty much every week, but I have departed from my blue exteriors, okay? <laughs> At this point, it's like a joke when I do them. I like make it blue on purpose because I know that it's a meme that all my houses look like this. So this house was kind of the meme. I was trying to embrace the blue suburban. I did it again and I'm not mad about it. But one thing I liked about this house is that the parents' bedroom is downstairs. A lot of times in real life, like luxury real estate, you'll notice that they always talk about how nice it is that like the master suite is separate from the other bedrooms and like how fancy that is <laughs> and it's a major perk which I guess makes sense so this one has like the parents bedroom downstairs and the kids rooms upstairs which I think happens a lot in houses in Florida too like my parents house doesn't have an upstairs but their rooms on the left and then all the kids rooms are on the right so same vibe with the separated bedrooms I don't really intentionally try to mimic like real life floor plans that often in the sims because sometimes like what is a nice feature in real life is kind of inconvenient in games because a lot of times it's nice in the sims to like have all the bedrooms near each other just because it's easier when you're trying to get your sims ready for bed to like have everything next to each other but it also is nice to make realistic looking homes <laughs> it's just sometimes things like the bedroom layouts don't really matter if they're that realistic like just put it where it works you know it's fine it doesn't matter it doesn't make a difference i really do pick and choose where i want to be realistic with my builds don't i <laughs> It's fun to do though. Sometimes it's fun to like pretend to make an ultra realistic home. The issue is that realistic houses are oftentimes really ugly in The Sims. Because when you make a house in real life, the window placement is very much based on the interior, which makes sense. But when you look at houses in real life from the outside, a lot of times they're really ugly. Like if you look at it from a bird's eye view, kind of like how you look at Sims houses, they look really weird. So we're a lot more nitpicky about like, layouts and roofing and stuff than you would be in real life. Like in real life, the roofing is not based on what looks the nicest from the top down, you know, cause no one sees it. They want a nice roofline in the front and the back probably, maybe not even the back, at least the front. But real roofing, you've got to worry about like drainage. <laughs> We don't have that problem. I just make it look nice. I just want it to be pretty. Okay, build aside though, I have a small life update for you. Cause I know a lot of you might know this about me, but I've got pretty bad driving anxiety, have for a long time, but I've been working on getting over myself and I've been trying to like put myself in stressful driving situations on purpose because that way I can, you know, get over it <laughs> better because otherwise I'll just never do it and that's not gonna help. So I drove on the highway alone for the first time this week. I've driven on the highway a lot, but like with my dad to practice for years, like, <laughs> cause I have always been so scared of doing it. So I've like practiced a lot with my dad. I've gone places with my brother before. Yes, my younger brother, who is a better driver than I am. He's almost 18, um, I'm 22, but uh, <laughs> like, for example, I've gone to pick up my dad from the airport before me driving but like with Brett in the car which to me that's driving on the highway alone right but it doesn't really count in my mind as driving on the highway alone because Brett was there and he's basically teaching me at this point like he's he's a lot more confident and um less stressed than I am so to me that makes him a better driver <laughs> so it doesn't count it's like I had a teacher in the car still but I went on the highway alone yesterday well Dan was in the car we went together somewhere but I did it I did cry twice the first time 
<laughs> not on the highway though. The first time is because somebody like ran a red light and pulled out in front of me and it scared me and I started crying before I even got to the highway. And then we were listening to Taylor Swift in the car. And as I'm getting on the on-ramp, like about to get on the highway, Taylor Swift comes on and yells, are you ready for it? Great album, Love Reputation, but come on, Taylor, the timing, just the like the music and the, right then, and then I <laughs> I started crying again, but like almost out of laughter, because I sat there and I was like, no. <laughs> and then I got on the highway and it was fine. Everything's fine. It isn't even that big of a deal. Like I know for most people, this is like such a non-issue. I just don't go many places. I very much um, drive to my parents' house and the grocery store. I don't really go out much, um, <laughs> mostly because I'm scared of leaving the house and also scared of driving. So um, that's my problem, but I'm really proud of myself for doing it and it was fine. I got there, I got home, no issue, which is a big improvement from how I was like five years ago. So <laughs> I'm doing a lot better. Anyway, this house has a total of three bedrooms, could be four depending on how you furnish the last one. So there's the downstairs parents' bedroom, upstairs there's two kids' bedrooms and an art studio space. But obviously that art studio could be a bedroom if you wanted it to, I just don't know how many sims you have. So I tried to make two like kid, maybe teen bedrooms, things that could kind of go either way, depending on how old your Sims kids are. One of them has a non-binary pride flag in it. I love this bedroom. I think it turned out so cute. I was trying to use like furniture that I never use really, and also wallpaper I don't really use. So I tried to pick that like dark blue color on the wallpaper and I think that it came together really well. Like I really like this bedroom and it also isn't that expensive. So I was kind of proud of myself for making like a, a decently priced, nice looking bedroom. Like <laughs> it's, an, it's an achievement, okay? A lot of times in like starter homes, this is not a starter home, it's not even close to being a starter home, it's very expensive. But a lot of times in like cheaper or like more affordable Sims houses, I feel like I personally really skimp out on the bedrooms. Even in general, when I'm making Sims builds, a lot of times when I'm making like a generic house like this, that's kind of like, here is a base game home that anyone can download. My goal is to make a thing that like everyone could download. And so a lot of times I'll put like a really generic kid's bedroom because that way you could just adjust it, maybe change some swatches to fit your sim, and then it would be fine. Because I know at least in my own gameplay, when I'm downloading a house off the gallery, which I don't really do anymore because I build so often, but back when I used to get houses off the gallery, I'd keep pretty much the whole house the same and then adjust the bedrooms for my kids. And so I kind of picture other people doing that too, and that's why I kind of just like make a generic green kids bedroom and then call it a day. But in this house, I was trying to make some more detailed looking ones. Plus, I'm gonna make sims to fill this whole save file, so I'm kind of like imagining the sim in my head and making them a bedroom. And then when I actually make them, I'll be kind of inspired by the room, which maybe is a backwards way to go about making Sims, to make their bedroom first, but <laughs> I build a lot. I don't know. It works for me. So that first one was kind of like space themed in my mind. And then the second one was guitar themed or like music themed. I don't know. Very generic. I was trying to use this furniture that I never touch either because I don't really use that bed very often. I'm not a huge fan of the swatches. And so this room is admittedly a little bit ugly, but that was on purpose, okay? <laughs> I like I wanted to use these swatches that I don't really use so I picked that orange and like gray combo Intentionally because I've never done it. And so I was like, this is the time granted. It doesn't look that good I definitely could have picked better swatches, but I I like the orange and gray my twitch chat didn't like it um, But I liked it. So <laughs> that's all that matters, right? But if you don't like it, don't worry You're not alone. A lot of people didn't like it. I was trying to branch out I did put a trans flag in there too. So it looks I thought it looked nice together, but I don't know and also, in my opinion, kids' rooms don't have to be, like, that nice. There can be some mismatched stuff going on in kids' bedrooms. It happens all the time. You're telling me your bedroom when you were a child was, like, super put together and fancy? Because mine wasn't. I had hot pink walls and, like, a SpongeBob bedspread, okay? Didn't work. It didn't match. I liked it though, and I'd do it again. I'm not kidding. I <laughs> I had a SpongeBob like comforter sheet set, and it was blue and had like SpongeBob print on it, and I had the hot pink walls. So uh, I think it's nice. If I put that in The Sims, it would not be nice. It wasn't nice in real life either, but I was like six. So what are you gonna do? Yeah, I definitely um, went a little bit out there <laughs> with the wallpaper upstairs in this particular house, okay? But I, I was trying to branch out. I thought it was nice. 
when else can you use a boat wallpaper, for example, other than here in this office slash art studio room? Perfect opportunity. I swear, I like to have one of these skill building type rooms in pretty much every Sims house if I can fit one. And I say this all the time, but it's because there's so many random things that you need, but you can't put anywhere. Like random skill building objects and like, cupcake machines <laughs> and just all these giant items that you want to use but how do you fit them into your house they, they don't work you need to just have a room and you stick it in the room and you just let it exist there granted that room's not so bad because it just had a computer and an easel but some things are less appealing than computers and easels <laughs> like that giant microscope you gotta put it somewhere possibly the porch i do that a lot too I get a giant thing, just put it on the porch. Put it in the side yard. Don't worry about it, just stick it over there. <laughs> It'll be fine. I should start putting basements for this kind of thing. The problem is that basements are kind of expensive in The Sims. Like you wanna use a basement to stick your like giant stuff in, but then you gotta build a basement and pay for stairs. That's expensive, it really starts to add up. I used to put basements in so many Sims builds, like right when the basements first came out, cause they didn't come out with The Sims 4 on release. They added basements like pretty soon after The Sims 4 came out, but they came out in an update, like a little bit after the game was released. And I put them in so many builds at the time. And I think it, this just kind of happens where like a new feature comes out and you're like, oh my God, platforms, put them in every house. But realistically, it's like not that practical to have platforms or basements in every one of your builds, so you kind of just slowly stop using them. I think it was a novelty for me too as a person who lives in Florida. We can't have basements here, the water table's too high, and like the ground is sand, literally all sand, so you, you don't find basements in Florida, it's just not a thing. So I think when I got the chance to put them in my Sims houses, I was like, ooh, a basement, how exciting, <laughs> how new and fun and different, but now I don't really do it anymore. Maybe I'll start again. Get ready for basements in every build. Oh, we could put like a games room in the basement. Ping pong table, big TV, like movie setup with some video games. Oh, now I'm inspired. I have a house in mind. I feel like this house could work with that, honestly. If this house had a basement, like a games room in the basement, this one would work, but it's too late now. <laughs> Maybe in the next one. I'll catch you in the next one. Give me a week, I'll make one. I do all of my builds on Twitch, by the way, like my speed builds, sort of like this one. I mostly build these on stream. So if you ever wanna come by and like build with us, we very much take suggestions. Uh, you can laugh at my guitar rooms before I post them on YouTube. It's really great fun. So I'll link my Twitch channel down below. But now the build is coming to a close and I wanna hop into a quick tour and show you the house in person. I guess in person is the wrong word. It's a Sims build. Let me just show you around. I've actually made some pretty decent progress with Newcrest here. Not really. I've made like four houses and a pool and a park, but we've made some decent progress. And this is the house that we built today. So you can kind of get an idea for what the street's going to look like already with the big oak trees. This house has like the little walk up, the brick stairs, the brick porch. I hit my elbow on my desk. <laughs> I got a flamingo, a gnome, a mailbox, all the bases are covered. Then in the backyard, it's really small, but I put a little tiny garden. We've got a table, a grill. God, I would kill to have a backyard like this. I know it's small, but I currently have zero backyard space. So this, to me, a dream. And the porches too, oh, I want a porch so bad. Anyway, inside the house, it's just one big living area. So you walk in, there's a small TV section. You've got a little dining table, little kitchen in here. The hallway takes you to a small half bath downstairs. And then the parents' bedroom, which is, which is purple. I know it's different. I was trying something new. Unlike this part, which looks like every build I've ever made, the parents have their own ensuite bathroom. And then upstairs, there's a decent sized hallway. There's a kid's bathroom, which I tried to make look used. Like kids have been in here and made a little bit of a mess. There's that art studio space I was talking about with the boats on the wall. Yeah, I like it, I do. I know it's weird, I kinda like it. The first kids room is that space theme I was talking about. We've got like some space movie posters. They even have a laptop. And these rooms I think could both very easily be teenagers bedrooms too, depending on like who your Sims are. Also, yeah, that's an alien, a real one. It's a live space squid and that's Baby Yoda. And then over here is the other kid's bedroom. This one's more like sports and music themed, I was thinking. So I based it off this bed. It's not as bad as I made it out to be. I just know my chat did not like the orange wall when I put it up, but I think it looks okay in here. And it also feels very realistic. But that's the whole house. It isn't very big. It actually costs 65,000 simoleons. So I had that whole spiel about it being affordable. It's not really. Um, 
I was trying for it to be. The goal was originally 50,000 simoleons, and then I went a little bit off the deep end there, but 65, that, you, you could still make that much money. It's not that bad, as far as, like, actual gameplay goes. It's a little bad. You just sell the laptop, you know? <laughs> That'll fix it. But that is the whole house. Thank you again to my friends at Word Farm Adventure for sponsoring this video. I will have that download link in the description box if you want to check it out. And on that note, I will see you all tomorrow. Bye, everybody. I am determined to make that boat wallpaper work. I'm trying so hard to fit it places. I have never used it until now, and I'm, I'm gonna use it and keep using it. I will make you love those boats.